Hi everyone, this is Teacher Rethel, and today we will be discussing about the two-way table of specifications. A table of specification, or also known as test blueprint, helps the teacher remember the objectives and the test items at different levels. It is designed based on the list of course objectives, the topics covered in class, and the amount of time spent on those topics. It also allows the teacher to construct a test which focuses on the key areas and weights those different areas based on their importance. It provides the teacher with evidence that the test has content validity that it covers what should be covered. It is a chart or table that details the content and cognitive level assessed in a test. It provides a test constructor a way to ensure that the assessment is based from the intended learning outcomes. It also ensures that learning has taken place across the range of content areas covered in the class and the cognitive process considered by the teacher as important. In other words, the table of specification is a guide that assures the teacher and the test takers that only those covered in class or discussed in class will be included in the test. There are different components of table of specifications. We have content outline, which lists the topic and the important objectives included under the topic, the categories which serve as a reminder or a check on the cognitive complexity of the test. These refer to the levels of cognitive processes that are emphasized in the test, the number of items for each objective or content. It also reflects a balanced picture of what was taught or whether all topics and objectives will be tested. There are two formats of table of specifications, the one-way and the two-way. And in this video, we will be focusing on the two-way table of specification. In a two-way table, categories or skills to be developed should be spelled out. Examples of these skills are the knowledge, computation, and application. Here is a simple example of a two-way table of specification. Remember that for each instit institution, they may have a different format. For the first column, we have the objectives. Then we have for the second column, the number of days or hours spent in teaching the different objectives or contents. And for the next three columns, we have the categories of skills. These categories will differ depending on the type of skills that the teacher wants to see or to assess in his or her students. So for this example, we have the knowledge, then we have comprehension, then we have the application. Then the next column, we have the total, which means the total number of items for each objective or content. Then we have the percentage of items for each objective or content. So for this example, we have the following objectives. To know the different kinds of notes, give the value of each note, identify the different clefts, locate the dot in different clefts, and interpret the rhythmic pattern. We have to decide first on the number of items to give in the test. We consider the nature of subject, the grade level, level of thinking skills desired, and the time allotment. So for this example, we have a 60 item test. Then we review the number of days or hours spent in teaching the whole unit. So for this example, we have 15. So the number of items to be included for each content or objective depends on the number of days or hours spent in teaching that particular content or objective. So the longer the content was discussed, the more the number of items should be for that particular content. Then we have to decide how many items should be allotted for each objective or topic. So for objective number one, we have, it was discussed in two days or two hours. Then give the value of each note, objective number two, it was discussed in, let's say, two days. Identify the different clefts, three days. Locate the do in different clefts, four days. And interpret the rhythmic pattern, four days. This is just an example. We can have number of days or number of hours. And the total of these um, hours is 15. So to identify or to determine the number of items per objective, we have the following formula. 
total number of items divided by total number of days or hours, then multiplied by the number of days or hours the item was taught or the content was taught. So for example, for objective number one, the total number of items is 60 divided by the total number of hours spent in teaching all the objectives or contents, which is 15, then multiplied it by the number of days the objective or objective number one was discussed or taught, which is two, and we have the answer, which is eight. So there should be eight items that will cover objective number one. For objective number two, we have 60 divided by 15, which is four, multiplied by two because objective number two was discussed in two days or let's say two hours, then the, the, the answer is eight. So there should be eight items for objective number two. The same formula goes with the objective number three, but we have three days because objective number three was discussed in three days or let's say three hours. So the total is 12. So it means that there should be 12 items for objective number three. For objective number four, we have the formula 60 divided by 15, which is four multiplied by four because objective number four was discussed or covered in four hours or let's say four days. So the answer is 16. There should be 16 items for objective number four. And for objective number five, we have also 16 items. Then we decide what categories of skills we are going to use. Let's say we will use the Bloom's taxonomy of cognitive domain, particularly the knowledge, the comprehension, and the application. So this will, will differ depending on your subject and the skills that you want to measure in your assessment or test. We decide what item numbers you will assign for questions or items that cover a particular objective in a particular skill category. For example, since there are eight items for objective number one, we will assign numbers one to eight. Please remember that the items need not to be in sequence. You can have, for example, item number one, item number five, item number 15, item number 60, item number 45, it depends on you. Just by looking at the table of specification, we will be able to see which items will cover which particular objective. Items number uh, one to two will cover the knowledge category. So the number inside the parenthesis indicates the item, num item number in the test. So by looking at the table, we see that there are two items that will measure the knowledge of the student in the different kinds of notes. And these items will be, found, will be will found in item number one to two. Item three to five will cover comprehension. Since there are eight items in objective number one, these items are distributed in the knowledge, comprehension, and application categories. For the knowledge category, we have two items which are found in items one and two and the three items which will be found in item number three, four, and five, which will also uh, measure the comprehension on the different kinds of notes. And items six to eight will cover application. So there are three items which will measure the application of the different kinds of notes, which are found in item numbers six, seven, and eight. For item number two, there are eight items, three items under knowledge category, which are found in item numbers nine, 10, and 11. There are two items under the comprehension category, which are found in item numbers 12 and 13. And there are three items under application category, which are found under item numbers 14, 15, and 16. For, for objective number three, we have 12 items. Five are found under knowledge category with item numbers 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. We have four items under comprehension category with item numbers 22 to 25. We have 
three items under application category, which are found in item numbers 26 to 28. Then we have for objective number four, all the items, which are 16 items, are found in um, application category, which are found in the items, item numbers 29 to 44. So in other words, the items need not cover all the categories. So it will depend on your objectives. Then we have also 16 items for objective number five, which are all found in the application category in item numbers 45 to 60. Then we solve a percentage of items per objective or topic. The percentage of items in objective number one, we have the following formula. Total number of items for a particular objective or topic, which is in our case, um, for example, is eight for objective number one. Then we divide it by the total number of items, which is 60, and then we multiply it by 100. So for objective number one, eight divided by 60 times 100 is equal to 13.33. So in other words, 13.33% of all the items will measure their knowledge, comprehension, or application of the objective number one. Objective number two, eight, which is the total number of items for objective number two, divided by 60, which is the total number of items for all the objectives or contents, then we multiply the answer by 100, and the answer is still 13.33%. Then for objective number three, 12 divided by 60, then we multiply the answer by 100, the answer is 20 or 20%. 20 then we have objective number four, 16 divided by 60, then the answer will be multiplied by 100. The answer is 26.67. And for objective number five, 16 divided by 60, multiplied by 100, the answer is 26.67, and the total is 100%. So we have here an example of two-way table of specifications, which outlines the categories of skills, the number of items for each objective, and the percentage of items for each objective. So that ends our presentation or discussion about the two-way table of specification, and here is the reference. So thank you very much. And if you like this video, kindly click the like or thumbs up button. And you may, you may also subscribe to this channel for more future videos. So thank you very much and stay safe.